here today believe in the greater good? Not that many. OK, a lot of you. So let's start with a hypothetical situation. Imagine you are a doctor, and you have six patients with you, each one in a critical situation. Now, five of these patients need immediate organ transplants, different organs, of course. And the sixth patient has a 50-50 chance of surviving. Now, you, you as a doctor, know that you could use the sixth patient as an organ donor and save all other five lives. What do you do? It's a simple comparison, right? One life versus five lives. The more logical part of us says that we should save the five lives. After all, it is for the greater good. But then, the more morally conscientious part of us asks the question, can we really compare lives? And who are we to decide who lives and who dies? And it is true. What authority do we have to make the decision about who gets to live and who doesn't? That sixth person had rights. That person had the right to live. That person had the right to make the decision whether she wanted to sacrifice her life to save other lives. Isn't this concept of individual rights what society is based on today? But then, those five people, they had families too. Maybe they had children. By sacrificing one person, one person, we could have saved five lives, saved five families from the sorrow of death. And to be honest, the grief of five families is more than the grief of one, right? Now maybe, maybe five isn't a large enough number for you. So let's make it 20, or maybe 100. Now should we choose a single life over multiple lives? Is there a number after which it becomes OK to sacrifice one person to save many other lives? Is there a tipping point which goes from, this person has rights, and we should respect these rights, to no, rights are insignificant because too many lives are at stake? And if there does exist such a number, such a tipping point, then what is it? Now, at this point, I'm going to introduce the term utilitarianism. Now, utilitarianism is a, is a philosophical ideology that believes in actions that lead to maximum good and minimize suffering. Utilitarianism believes in the greater good. Now, in a utilitarian world, for some action to be just or for some action to be moral, you basically have to do a little bit of mathematical calculation, adding up the benefits and subtracting the costs. And if the action maximizes benefits over costs, if the benefits are greater than the costs, then that action is justified. Now, although utilitarianism is talking about maximizing good, it is crude. It is crude because it is absolutist in the sense that everything becomes a mathematical equation. It is either this or it is that. There is no in-between. So utilitarian will obviously choose five lives over one. Five is greater than one. Also, to a utilitarian, it does not matter if the donor was voluntary or not. What matters is that five lives were saved in lieu of one. It is the final outcome that defines an action as moral or immoral, not the means. In layman terms, utilitarianism says that the ends justify the means. Now, utilitarianism Utilitarianism is opposed to the concept of individual rights. Some philosophers, they reject utilitarianism by saying that we individuals, we own ourselves, and thus we should have a right to play a role in deciding whether we want to sacrifice ourselves for the greater good. Now, all these philosophers, they had different arguments to protect, to support individual rights. So I'm asking you, what is, what is our modern defense to protect individual rights? At an individual level, at a subconscious level, we, we probably take rights for granted. I mean, rights are a part of our life. By using the term fundamental, we have ingrained in the minds of the people that having these rights is the first step towards humanity. Rights have become a necessary part of modern civilization. We don't question it. Moreover, we expect it. The absence of these rights seems crude and inhumane. And it often reminds us of some of the darkest periods in history, such as Hitler's regime, Stalin's era, and the reign of terror. 
each an example where individual rights were violated with the excuse of the greater good. Having these rights has become our, our safeguard against exactly those who wish to misuse power in the name of the greater good. So we see two different questions arising here. Is it more important to focus on individual rights or should we be focusing on the greater good? And the second question being, is there an in-between balance or a gray area where utilitarianism is justified in certain cases? Now today, we live in a highly democratic society where most of us probably believe democracy to be the best possible form of government that we have. And democracy is primarily based on rights. We as people, we grow up believing that we have certain rights, that we are free to make our own decisions. And all this sounds extremely noble and appealing to us. But what happens when our rights, when your rights, when your decisions come in the way of the greater good? What happens then? Taking a simple example, in order to build a highway, certain houses needed to be broken down. Now, the government promised 100% compensation to all the residents living there. The residents refused. They have a right to refuse. After all, we live in a democracy so that people can have the right to be inconsiderate. Thousands of people were stuck in traffic every single day for hours. Obviously, it is in the interest of the greater good to relocate those people. But to be fair, those people don't want to move because that is their home. That is where they've established their community. It is only natural that they wouldn't want to shift. But I ask you, is it fair that thousands of people suffer just because they don't want to move? So in this situation, what should the government do? Should the government remain quiet? Or should it force the people to move out? Well, in a democracy, the government isn't in a position to do anything as it must first protect the rights of its citizens. So, I'm asking you, what was the right thing to do in this situation? Some might say it is extremely selfish of those people living in those houses. They should make this small sacrifice for the betterment of society. Absolutely true. But the crux of the problem here isn't this particular situation. The question is, do individual rights always come first? Or does the greater good come first? And how do we justify this? Honestly asking, how many of you would have happily made this small sacrifice for society? A lot of you. <laughs> okay. So, I guess it seems more fitting and more logical that as a species, as a society, we should be more concerned with the overall well-being of our community. We are small particles, a part of something much bigger. And as sparing a few means, that the society is happy, the community is happy, we should be happy. Ind individuals come secondary, right? But then, doesn't that go against every moral fiber in your body? We, as people, have chosen to recognize each individual as significant. It is our humanity that leads us to believe that each life is important, equal, and that every person has a say over his or her own life. I mean, all of us want to say over our own lives, right? Here we see the power struggle between practicality and morality. Well, in some twisted sense, being practical means that more of society is happy. And isn't the welfare of society the very aim of morality? Well, this, I suppose, depends on how you define morality. Going by the dictionary definition, morality was defined as doing the right thing, choosing good over bad. Now, this, again, comes down to how you define good. Now, Amusingly enough, the dictionary I happen to be using describes good as displaying moral virtue. It's a circular definition, going nowhere. This is a vague and controversial argument. I'm sure none of us completely believe in any one side of this. We're in between, conflicted between our rational desire to be progressive and practical and our emotional desire to be fair and considerate. Once again, we have a war waging between the heart and the mind and neither one ever wins. At an individual level, we probably want to be moral. Who doesn't want to be a good person? And we respect those who are. But what about when we're choosing leaders, choosing someone to rule the country? Then we, what we want is a utilitarian. We want someone who will do best 
for the country. Someone who will minimize damage. It's just how the world functions. Now at this point, I want you to imagine society to be a building made up of blocks. What we care about is if the building holds and the structure survives. If the building collapses, what are the blocks? They're nothing without the building. We are nothing without our society. So if a few are spared, but the structure is surviving, we will do so gladly. We, as human beings, have chosen to live in society. We have chosen to live together as social beings. And the course of utilitarianism is what tags along. To survive as a community, we must think and act in favor of the community. It is a necessary evil. But then, what about things like the cost-benefit analysis? Now, the Czech government recently held a cost-benefit analysis on smoking. Now, the study revealed that smoking was actually beneficial to the economy. Now, all the money that the government spent on, uh, on diseases caused due to smoking was more than made up for in taxes. But it wasn't just the taxes. When, when people smoke, they tend to die early. And when people die early, that saves the government a lot of money. The government didn't have to pay for pensions. Who would they give it to? Didn't have to pay for all the diseases that come with old age, a lot of them. Didn't have to give out health insurance. And they didn't have to pay for old age homes. There were no old people. Old people were becoming a liability to the economy. And smoking was dealing with the problem. Smoking was beneficial to the economy. So why make smoking illegal? Well, to be fair, the people knew the risks of smoking. They were making their independent, informed decisions. And what's more is that all the money that the government saved per person who smoked and died was, could be used to provide health, shelter, education to thousands of other people. But the government could have stopped these deaths. And it didn't simply because smoking was economical. So does this make the Czech government a good one or a bad one? At the end of the day, I suppose we cannot classify situations into categories by saying that in this case, we should protect individual rights. But in this case, we should adopt utilitarian policy. I, I guess most of us would come to agree that morality is much more complicated than simply being, being black or white. Every single day of our lives, we are faced with decisions we cannot make. Decisions we have to live with. And as all of us know, and a simple saying goes, in order to gain something, you have to lose something. In harsher, or perhaps more accurate words, the famous Russian leader, dictator, Stalin once said, in order to make an omelette, you've got to crack a few eggs. I repeat, in order to make an omelette, you've got to crack a few eggs. Of course, by cracking a few eggs, Stalin meant that you've got to kill a few hundred thousand people every now and then. But, and, he, and he used the statement to justify gruesome things. But it is the essence of the statement that is important. And leaders across time and space know and believe what Stalin has said to be true. Sometimes you've got to make sacrifices for the greater good. But the question, I suppose, is, is the omelette really worth breaking the eggs? Thank you.